Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. So I just wanted to make a quick announcement really, just to say this is going to be my last live appearance on a Friday. Now, as you know, if you've been following and you've subscribed to the notifications, um, you'll see that I've been going live every day, for five days a week. But Fridays I'll be having open because you might have known I was making a roll call to work with 10 people to actually work side by side with them to help them meet their health goals and particularly people who are pre-diabetes and type 2 because it's on the rise and I get a lot of people who are coming to me with this condition. But it was open to people who wanted to meet some sort of health goal and perhaps they're going through an autoimmune disease, there's um, illnesses that run through their families. And I've been making my calls today and my, it's getting busier and busier because I'm doing one-to-one -one work with people now. So Fridays are really going to be scheduled for my calls with most of my clients. But we've got a specific topic tonight and that is really um, skin conditions and I work with people who suffer with particularly eczema and a lot of the character traits with people who have skin conditions is itchy skin, inflammation and severely dry skin cases. And my son in particular has been um, a sufferer with folliculitis and he's really been working through it and over the, since he was about 16 He's been suffering with folliculitis and he's made great breakthrough and a lot of progress in treating it naturally. And he will, wants to speak, he, I'll pass you on to him to speak to him about, um, he'll speak to you about some of the th processes he's gone through, the medications that he was given, what he's tried, what has failed and what has worked today. But if you have a skin condition and you'd like to, make any comments here um, and have a discussion. Join the discussions with us because there are going to be a lot of takeaways as well. And we can all have a kind of talk about what has worked for you, what isn't working for you, and perhaps some of the things that you could try. So Anthony, if you don't mind, um, my son is Anthony. He's also um, my co-director at Carol Fraser, Carol's Organic Kitchen. And uh, if you don't mind, just giving us a little introduction about your journey really with dealing with folliculitis. Okay, so just make sure everyone can hear me. I can take my headphones off now. Um, so I've had folliculitis since I was, I would say 15. Um, 15 going on 16. So I've had folliculitis for about 20 years now. And um, I'm finally at a point where I really feel it's the end of my journey with folliculitis but to give you a bit of context I would start at the beginning now um, I believe it started when I changed hairstyles now folliculitis uh, for those of you who don't know is commonly to do with ingrowing hair um, which grows incorrectly and then causes um, damage to the follicles and inflammation underneath the skin and the symptoms of that can be a lot of inflammation um, dry skin itchiness painful um, bumps red bumps uh, and that sort of thing um, I haven't dealt with a lot of those symptoms in a long time because I've got to a point where I've managed it so I'm not getting those painful red bumps um, I'm not getting itching anymore and um, the oozing has stopped. The oozing has stopped. Um, the um, the dryness has stopped. The itching has stopped. The color disc the discoloration has gone away. A lot of this is obviously down to um, the skincare that I'm using, which is the Dermazine. Which, although we mainly um, promote it to be a good solution for people with eczema-prone skin it really is uh, a solution for people with dry irritated broken skin because it's very soothing and um, it works to repair 
and restore the skin back to its natural state. But obviously there's a lot of work that has to be done on the inside as well and I'm gonna go into that, especially for severe skin conditions because I've obviously had this for a good part of my life, most of my life. So um, by the time I started treating it, I was, I was in a quite a severe state. So it's taken some work to reverse that and some discipline. So um, let me take you back to the beginning. So I believe it was when I changed my hairstyle at that time, I mostly had always had short hair, but I decided that I wanted to have cornrows. And so I, um, I started growing up my hair and I think I had perhaps decided to do it a little bit too early because um, my hair wasn't quite long enough so I had to uh, it be me being impatient I, I had um, extensions put in to my hair um, and it was quite tight the way that they were uh, doing these cornrows and so I think that might have irritated my scalp now um, fast forward a little bit I'm starting to get these bumps onto my scalp it's very embarrassing um, I'm in my final year of high school going on into college and um, it is a very I'm becoming very self-conscious about it obviously it's quite painful as well um, and I'm just going to adjust the brightness of this because I can see it's getting quite dark here but I'm going to continue with my story and so um, it's it's getting quite I'm becoming quite self-conscious and I'm going into college now and so I start growing out my hair again initially I cut it short to try and treat the bumps but because I've cut it short it's now become more visible so I decided because I'm at a very a point in my life where you know I'm trying to reinvent myself and going to college and you know meeting new people I started growing out my hair and growing it quite long because I realized um, by growing it longer and relaxing it um, which, which is straightening it uh, the chemicals for a short time would reduce the bumps to bas basically nothing and so um, a lot of people were assuming that it was mostly a fashion choice by mine but actually it was just a, a great way for me to hide my bumps as well so um, I was straightening my hair and it was reducing the bumps it was extremely painful to do uh, at the time because the chemicals were not um, mm. friendly to my, my sensitive scalp but um, really it's, it was the only way in my mind at the time to get rid of it because I'd been to the doctor and they told me that I had folliculitis and it was, there's no cure. So what I was given was um, a typical um, skincare, like a moisturizer, scalp moisturizer, uh, which was quite drying. I remember I had to apply it several times a day and my scalp was so itchy and within like half an hour my scalp would be dry and itchy again so but i didn't know any better so i was just using this thing constantly for years and years and years also i was given um do you know do you remember the name the name of the prescription the prescriptive cream you were i don't given? want to get it wrong but it was like a green tub which was about this size and that wide I think it was like dermatol or dermal I think it was dermal but I can't be 100% was it a, was it that oily type of residue or was it like a moisturizing cream it was like a cream it wasn't oily mm, at all mm. it wasn't oily at all um, and yeah it's quite drying and I was given some antibiotics um, which at first it brought them down a little bit but then they came back quite angrily uh, my bumps and then um, also I noticed I was getting stomach aches whilst taking it um, mm. which was I didn't realize until I stopped taking it that it was the the antibiotics that was causing it so um, once I realized that I was very reluctant to go back on it because I wasn't really seeing the benefits and I was going to school every day and I was taking this medication which was giving me a stomach ache every morning. So um, you can imagine it, it was quite a, a bit of a challenge to keep that up for the course. Um, and I keep, had to keep retaking the courses because um, 
it just became too much or I just n wasn't noticing the results. So this was going, a cycle of this was going on for a good 15 years, uh, 10 to 15 years. And I just stopped taking the antibiotics because I just felt that I didn't feel right taking that medication for as long as I was repeatedly knowing that it wasn't going to cure me or fix the problem. So I just stuck to really the, um, the, the cream and the shampoo that's right they gave me an antibiotic shampoo um sorry antibacterial shampoo it would have been antifungal wouldn't it no because mine my it might have been antifungal but my version of anti uh my version of um so i think i have folliculitis um i forget how to say it decavans or something like that it's not fungal it's anti it's a bacterial mm -hmm. Um, trigger so there's different types of folliculitis mm -hmm. some of it might be fungal some of it might be bacterial but my version is not contagious so I I could um, be around people I can have contact with people and it wouldn't be contagious at all uh, it's not fungal but the shampoo I had was antibacterial and it I found it to be quite effective sometimes I would um, I would leave it in I'd wash my hair my my scalp and then i'd wash it again with the shampoo and leave the shampoo in for an hour and then wash it out again and at that time i found that to be quite relieving and and to bring the information down a little bit but it never really went further than that um so I, out of all the pro, out of all the things they gave me i was most happy with the shampoo uh, but i always felt i had hope that it was going to go down even more but it it just never really progressed past a certain point so i was doing that for a long time and then i started looking up home remedies and natural treatments online in fact i, I looked at not just that i looked at anything i could find online from forums and that sort of thing i uh, think there was some very well yeah dodgy, I dodgy methods as well using dodgy bleach, methods wasn't there? it took I, me a while to convince you to try out the chimeric and coconut oil but well, I I um I used um, bleach on my scalp for one time, um, and that and that was very damaging. Um, yeah, I was really I worried about that. That was quite damaging. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't a good idea. Uh, I tried um, turmeric. I found to be really really effective turmeric, and I read somewhere also that if you add black pepper to turmeric it made it more powerful so i'd like drink black pepper i tried that for a little while i didn't keep that up um it was just it was quite horrible to drink the turmeric and the black pepper but i would apply it externally yeah do you remember and you remember making a paste didn't you so i said try using it as a paste instead of, if you didn't like it internally so you mixed it with coconut oil and the turmeric and made it into a paste and put it on your scalp i made i mixed it with coconut water coconut water was better than coconut milk because the water not coconut oil sorry not coconut not the paste with coconut oil i just mixed the turmeric with the coconut water because i found that the turmeric with water on its own was quite good initially but I just found the coconut water brought down the inflammation a whole lot more and also it was a bit more drying so when it dried it really dried and I found that the more it dried uh, the turmeric uh, and the um, coconut water the more the inflammation would come down I don't know what it was about that combination but it made it into more of a paste than the water did because the water was almost it was like oil and water it just didn't uh, blend as well as the, the the coconut water i don't know why but anyway i did that and i found that that would bring it down about 50 percent. that would bring the inflammation down quite significantly overnight but how you you were putting it on overnight weren't you mm -hmm. so if you want to just describe what you were doing because mm -hmm. you would the coconut oil and turmeric mm -hmm. made into a paste wasn't as effective as the turmeric and coconut water Mm -hmm. but you would have a routine wouldn't you i would have 
a routine. So every night I would, first of all, change my pillowcase. Um, and then I would, I would put in, um, every I would day. actually make a jar in advance. I would make a jar of turmeric. So I put a good foundation of turmeric at the bottom and then I would, uh, maybe a third. And then I would, um, I would add the coconut water, mix it into a paste so that it's, it's able, so I'm able to put it over my scalp. And sometimes I do it over the sink and it'd make a mess and you get turmeric stains everywhere. Uh, or in the bath, you stain up the bath with all the turmeric and it was a bit, it was a bit of a challenge to keep it up, but I kept it up for a good three months at one point and I did find that it was very effective. I have no complaints about that method. In fact, I would have kept using it up until now if it just wasn't so messy and I didn't have a better solution. But I'll get onto that in a second. But you change your pillowcase every day, every night. I change my pillowcase every night. And I've actually discovered recently that changing my pillowcase is probably one of the most effective things more than anything in terms of getting instant results. So if I change my pillowcase uh, every not if I don't change my pillowcase for a few days, I notice I will get a flare up, and I think it's because my type of um, folliculitis is bacteria is triggered by bacteria. Yeah, so um, I have to really be uh, make sure that I don't have uh, I keep my pillowcases clean and I wash my my scalp every day. So and and that keeps it down a lot. And you would you you'd let it dry first, obviously, before you went to bed oh yeah so i would apply the the the, the paste with the turmeric and the coconut water and then i would let it dry and then i would put like a wrap around my head whether a head scarf or something like that uh, and then i would just sleep on top of it and the fact that it's in the back of my head and i could just sleep on top of it i think that that really helped just kind of press it down make it really condensed um, but I'd wake up with like turmeric crumbs all down my neck and my shoulders and my bed and my sheets would be all orange. So it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a pain. It was a bit tedious at times, but I felt it really was working. So I, that kept me motivated to keep doing it. But after about three months of doing it every day, you, you start, it does start to wear and you start to think, when is this going to, when is this going to end, you know? Uh, so it was quite hard for me. I always found that three months was about the limit I could do to keep doing it every day consistently. And then once you stop doing it every day, it's it's like going to the gym. You just you lose the motivation and you lose the momentum and you, you stop doing it after a while. So around yeah. about the... Sorry, go on. Just, yeah, no, you continue. But your diet at that time was... My diet at that time is, wasn't as good as it should have been. It was, uh, when I first started applying the turmeric and stuff, I was still eating meats and fried foods and inflammatory foods and things like that. I wasn't plant-based or anything like that. Uh, I did notice the bit of relief with the turmeric and um, that brought the inflammation down from the outside, but I still had a lot of inflammation on the inside. Um, at one one day I will show you a picture of what my scalp used to look like and you will see it looks almost a lot more round <laughs> because there's so much inflammation on the inside it's come down almost completely now um, but yeah my diet at that time wasn't great and then um, I did start to notice as I started to change my diet the inflammation was coming down uh, my digestion was a, a lot more improved and I find that when my when I'm digesting food a lot better that my inflammation in my scalp goes down a lot and it improves a lot. So having plant-based foods which are really, really easy to digest, anti-inflammatory, uh, helped a lot to, uh, to, co to complement the, the efforts I was making with the uh, mm. turmeric and the natural treatments on the outside. So um, fast forwarding a little bit now, um, my mother's made dermazine um, and it's it's working for other people, particularly with eczema. So I thought to myself, hold on a minute, my mum's getting all this success with, uh, with people with eczema and dry skin conditions. I wonder if it will work for my folliculitis. Because um, at that time I was still using the turmeric and so I was like, okay, this is kind of working. So I didn't really think much of it. So then I was applying the, uh, initially I was applying the Dermazine 
quite thinly. I was pl applying it quite thinly as I would apply the normal uh, derm dermal or dermatol, whatever it was called, the cream that I was prescribed by my doctor. And I found that it stopped the itching completely, which was a massive relief. Uh, a big step for me. The dryness wasn't a problem anymore. So that was the big difference for me, uh, getting rid of the dryness and the, um, the itching because as anybody knows with skin conditions when you've got that itch it's it's um torture uh, and the dryness and the flakiness it, it's just it's so uncomfortable you just feel so uncomfortable and so unclean all the time uh but having that dermazine i didn't have to keep reapplying it i found that just applying a thin layer kept my head kind of moisturized and hydrated for the day uh, I'd maybe apply it again before night before going to bed but initially I didn't quite feel that it was bringing the inflammation down as the tu as much as the turmeric so I was doing both I was doing the turmeric and the dermazine um, but I was just grateful for the, the itching to go and, and the uh, moisturization initially but then I thought to myself um, after like a, maybe a year of doing it like that I thought to myself well why don't I experiment a bit? Because if I was doing this macidinally, like I'm applying this cream cosmetically um, just to keep the dryness away and, and, and so forth. But what if I started ta addressing it more medically? Like if I was being prescribed this by a doctor, a doctor might tell you to take a pill two or three times a day, or they might tell you to apply a, a cream two, a few times a day. So I started applying much more than what I, thought I needed so I I applied like I applied it like three or four times a day and I would just even if it felt like my head was like already quite moisturized I would just apply another layer and just let it sit on top of there um, because I I just wanted to see what would happen and I noticed that the inflammation started to go down a lot more rapidly uh, which I was a kind of surprised by because um, I never really noticed that with the cream before uh, and yeah I wouldn't have thought that it'd really bring the inflammation down but it was working so I was just like okay I'll just apply as much of this as possible and I was doing that and it's coming down gradually but you have to remember I was I've, I'm dealing with like at this point 15 years of inflammation and uh, and uh, damage to my scalp so although I felt like I was supplying it and it was going down so quickly that I'm like in my head I'm like this is going to be done in a few weeks or this is going to be done in a few months um, but really it's, it's taken a lot longer than that and I think part of that was because I still wasn't being completely disciplined with my diet um, I was still and I found that it, things that were triggers were like fried foods like um oil vegetable oils and that sort of thing and at that time i was that was i was just loving fried foods i just yeah I it was just a could... period of um, a lot of deep frying going on in the house <laughs> yeah i mean there was that as well yeah there was deep frying there was shallow frying even at night <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, they say it's easier to change a man's religion than his diet. So I think for me, um, I just needed to find those cornerstone recipes that I just know I could eat every day and it would take me really... Because the thing is with fried food, it's just so easy and convenient. You just take it, you fry it. And I think I was just being... I don't want to say lazy because I work hard and, uh, you know, I'm not a lazy person, but... I, I probably should have uh, been putting more effort into my health uh, in terms of my, my diet. That's the hardest thing for people is that mm. relearning how to cook, especially when you've got those those home favorites. So even though I was making fried foods, it wasn't like meats all the time. It was actually veggie versions of meats and things like that that I would fry to kind of get the same sort of comfort feeling. Um, so that was my way of trying to easing myself into this new lifestyle. But nowadays, I'll skip forward a bit. I won't bore you with all the details. Um, one thing I will mention is that 
I went through a phase of wanting to eat cereal again because I gave up milk and dairy. And so I hadn't eaten cereal in years. And I used to love having cereal at night. But then I kind of realized I could have um, like an oat milk with um, with like a Shreddies or my normal Weetabix, whatever. And so although the sugar was kind of bad, I didn't eat much sugar anyway. If I wasn't eating with, with the cereal, I wasn't eating sh any sugars at all. Uh, I wouldn't even have fruits at that time. So I started eating Shreddies again and Frosties. And for some reason, my scalp, even within a few hours, it went was going down like dramatically. Now I was thinking, how can this be possible? I'm eating um, Frosties, but what I realised is that the vitamin D that they were packing into the Frosties, because I was eating big bowls, like they say on the packet, like sixteen <coughs> bowls, sixteen bowls, um, but I'm having like maybe four or five bowls out of that six, so-called sixteen. So I'm having a lot of vitamin D. And having uh, there was a lot of vitamin D and vitamin A in the oatly milk, so and I think it was particularly the vitamin A that was was helping me. Um, so I was like, okay, what if I just cut out the the sugars and the and the processed foods and just start taking the vitamins, uh, supplements, and having it in with my food? And my mum helped me with that, uh, cho choosing the right vitamin supplements and 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 choosing the right foods that are going to give me those things naturally so i started with the supplements and um i definitely noticed that it does it was the vitamins that was helping me so i've managed to eradicate the cereals um, and keep the vitamins but i was finding it um initially I was finding it hard to keep up with the vitamins because i was trying to get into routine of taking the vitamins whereas before i didn't need a reminder all I need, I just felt hungry and I would eat the cereal. So um, it took me a while to get consistent with that, but I'm very consistent with it now. With vitamin D, vitamin A, and magnesium and that sort of thing. Um, but I definitely recommend to anybody who's got folliculitis or bacterial uh, related one, definitely change your pillowcase every day because that's out of everything that brings down inflammation the most I found. Um, and then the vitamins and then the uh, dermazine actually I probably put the, the dermazine before the vitamins because um, of the itching the, I take it for granted now not, not itching at all I haven't itched in years uh, and that just gave me more confidence as well having a more moisturised scalp going out into public I just felt a lot more confident so there's that um, and then um the last thing I would say is recently I've been on a fruitarian diet and I've been eating um, my crumbola. I'll link to the video, the tutorial of how to make that, which is essentially a fruitarian cereal. So I will have my vitamins right uh, during having the meal. So I'll drink, swallow my vitamins and continue eating the meal. And it basically is just uh, cut up apples or you can use grapes put those into the bowl and then I'll make a really thick smoothie so it's almost like a yogurt texture with iris sea moss which has 92 minerals out of your 102 your body needs and um, yeah just bananas in the smoothie um, dark fruits berries and iris sea moss and I would pour a bit of oatly in oat milk into the um, into the um, it, into the mixture. Originally, I was using the oat milk, but I've moved. It, I've changed to what is it? Plenty. Um, that there's another brand. I can't remember that, the name of the ones we've been having recently. They're organic. You like the oats, don't you? Yeah. Because um, I make my, you know, I make my own milks, but you, that can't. You make one your own You've milks. got isn't too bad. It's. Um, I think it's. Is it replenish? replenish or something like that or plenish but um i the the reason i'm using them so i liked the oatly before because they had like a whole milk version and that's what i was having with my cereal because it was the best uh, i i found um the most realistic whole milk version of a plant-based 
version of milk that I'd had. Mm. But now I'm having it with the smoothies. I don't need it to be that texture. And I think they were putting like rapeseed oil in it or something mm. like that to make it like that. This one, the plentiful or the plenish doesn't have that. So I'm just putting that in the smoothies. And I just want it for the vitamin A and the vitamin D that's in naturally in the um, oat milk. So and there's one other thing that you did add to that um, mm -hmm. sort of thick yogurt texture type of smoothie bowl was the walnuts and the Brazil nuts. Brazil yeah. nuts are quite high, probably the highest in magnesium out of the nuts. Okay. And of course, you've got the omega-3s there as well so those oils would have done you a great deal of good well you always say that the magnesium um, tells the vitamin d where to go that's right it actually helps it to distribute the the vitamin d you need to have um, d3 mm -hmm. specifically um, which is actually a hormone it's an essential hormone and mm -hmm. by taking the magnesium it helps to with the absorption of vitamin D, it's very important. Well, I've been having, um, I've been having the vitamin D and I've been having the vitamin A and consistently all of these things combined have really contributed to mm. massive progress over the last few weeks, months, I would say. I think I've been on the Crumbola diet for um, about two months now, everyday Crumbola. But I do think the antioxidants and are really helping to bring down the inflammation from the inside. Because um, I never really ate much fruits before. I only really invented this as a replacement for the cereals because I wanted something that I could crunch on uh, and um, just something sweet to replace the sugar cravings. And I don't mm. crave any sugar now. So I've cut out sugar completely out of my diet, which is obviously helping to reduce inflammation as well. Um, so that was a big thing and also I think when and the, the dried fruits don't forget the dried because fruits. you've got the cranberries and the golden berries which mm. you which we um, grind down with the walnuts and Brazil nuts so you're getting all those fats so that's quite, and the protein of course and mm -hmm. then you've got the sugars from the dried fruits the natural sugars concentrated sugars from the dried fruits and those dried fruits are really amazing and the nuts are really good quality from um, a shop called The Nutcase. The nut. It's Nutcase. Nutcase, not nut The Nutcase. In nut Shepherd's Bush. In Shepherd's Bush, mm -hmm. West 12. We'll put the link below, actually. We'll People want below. to source really good quality uh, oh, fruit and nuts. That and reminds seeds. me. Yes. Uh, and they're, they're the best prices um, available for that quality. Yep. Um, I haven't seen anywhere of better prices. Best than prices there. in London. So... Uh, shout out Nutcase, um, big fans of them. Lifesavers actually, because um, it really added a really nice element to my to my cereals. Having those crumbled nuts on the top. I'll put the demo uh, as recommended after this video, so you can watch uh, me making one. But um, the, that yeah, the link me. to their shop is in that um, video actually, so they can locate it from that video. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, so uh, before I forget, I stopped using the shampoo and I moved to a pure coconut oil That's soap. Right, yes. And you did try black soap, African black soap, did you? Remember I recommended yeah, it? Yeah, I did, but I didn't really like the feeling of it uh, on my scalp. I used it on my face and my mm -hmm. body, but I didn't like the feeling of it on my scalp mm. at that time because at that time my scalp it would like absorb a lot it would absorb moisture mm. and i felt that the black soap would stay in it would feel i could feel it like under my skin a bit longer than any other soap or shampoo whereas mm. with the shampoo i had before was very drying mm. and i always liked the drying shampoos because i felt that it would made my bumps feel a lot flatter mm -hmm. afterwards mm. and being self-conscious about it i didn't want anything that st made my stayed in my skin and made my bumps feel a bit bigger so coconutty is the name of the brand of the soap that you were using wasn't it and that was that's a where pure, i bought my um coconut unref oil soap. unrefined 100 percent virgin co virgin coconut soap right and it's 100 percent natural no artificial no that's right. um, lather very, very or anything good. like that 
Mm. Um, and I was a bit, I was like, mm, is this going to be as good as my antibacterial shampoo? But it worked even better for me and it just, it felt better. I felt better using it um, and it brought down the inflammation as well. So that in combination with the dermazine was working wonders on the outside. Um, but I try also their charcoal and tea tree oil and coconut oil soap. So all of their soaps have a coconut oil base, but they have uh, some other versions of it. So I tried their charcoal one and that's the one I'm using now, charcoal and tea tree. But since my fruitarian diet and the inflammation has gone down so much that now I can use the black soap and I don't feel that I've got any, uh, I don't feel like it's getting under my skin. Um, so I find the black soap is just as good as the um, coconutty now, but I just, I just love the coconutty feeling. I think it, I love that it lavers up a bit more than the black soap. And I like that feeling when I'm, uh, when I'm, um, mm. when I'm washing. So I do, um, I do still go with coconut, even though the black soap is, is, just as good I mm -hmm, find mm -hmm. I like to use the black soap on my face because I find that it really um, balances my skin tone and, and neither of those soaps by the way um, contain any type of preservative like you know uh, those artificial um, parabens and things like that that's right neither do they contain sodium laurel sulfate that give that you know the um, lather and they lather up pretty well and it's the coconut it's the actual coconut um, there's a compound in coconut that gives it its natural lather and we did do a video didn't we Anthony on um, coconutty soaps including the charcoal we did and I will link that in the description as well I will link to that video and I will link to the crumbola in the description so you can watch uh, my recommendations of those those guys yeah um, and I will link to Nutcase as well in the description, just to make it easy for you guys. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't uh, want to over um, share because I don't want it to be feel overwhelming for you guys that you have to do all of these things at once. Um, it's not, it's not how I started. I started gradually. I experimented with different things, and then I just when I found something was working, I just added it to my routine. So for you, if you just want something to start, particularly if you've got folliculitis with, something to start with, change your pillowcase every day. That's gonna make a huge impact. You're not gonna be taking a step forward and then taking two steps back every day. Um, use the Dermazine cream, use the coconutty um, soaps, and you will start seeing massive progress. Even if you're not eating 100% plant-based or, you know, healthy you will start to see the benefit from the outside and then that will give you motivation to start eating correct and start solving it internally but um that's all i wanted to say on that particular topic really um mm -hmm. thank you it's, Anthony. It, it's all right I'm quite happy i I'm ho i hope it helps somebody else yeah um, i mean that a lot of what anthony's spoken about there um, can relate to a lot of inflammatory, itchy, inflamed type of um, skin conditions, um, even including hives. So a few months ago, a friend of mine contacted me um, one evening. She had a visitor and his neck was completely inflamed, very red, very angry, full of hives. And the first thing I thought about was vitamin D and she had vitamin D in the house and I said to her to give him 4,000 IU and we had an event actually it was her birthday event and he was there and I saw him and the hives had gone completely completely gone from his neck and I said you know I said to him continue to make sure that you're getting adequate vitamin D because I notice he's he's very pale skinned and um, he, he hates the sun so I said to him make sure that you're getting adequate vitamin D because sometimes it, it's a lot of the time it's linked to deficiencies so like Anthony said vitamin A vitamin D helped him obviously the D3 with your magnesium of course and those three and I always advise on zinc anyway 
just to guard your immune system, which is always going to be, you know, in good stead for you. And um, it's great as prevention in terms of, you know, cough, colds and flu. Even at this time of the year, just continue to take those standard D3, magnesium and zinc, if anything else, and find a topical solution that's going to help. But also make sure that um, you take care of your diet so that you're eating a lot less inflammatory foods. And that also includes starches and carbs which turn to sugar and cause inflammation anyway thank you very much for watching it's been great having you and i hope that you'll join me again on monday i'll be coming on at six o'clock live but as of now i'll only be doing monday to thursday live and fridays i will be doing my one-to-one -one calls with those people who signed up to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis to help turn their health around. So thank you very much and I'll be back with more health tips and information to help you along your healthy living journey.